Hi! Until about 100 years ago, there were mathematicians who considered 1 to be a prime number. Please watch the previous video linked above. Goldbach, who proposed Goldbach's conjecture, had insisted that every integer greater than 2 can be written as the sum of 3 primes. Then he expressed 3 as the sum of 3 ones. 1 was a prime to Goldbach. On the other hand, mathematician Euler did not consider 1 to be a prime number. So he revised the conjecture to every even integer greater than 2 is the sum of 2 prime numbers. 2 which is 1 plus 1 was excluded from the conjecture. How did 1 end up being excluded from prime numbers like it is now? Because it was more profitable. To whom? To math. Let's math travel. First of all, 1 cannot be a composite number. Since 1 is only divisible by 1, it has only one divisor. There is absolutely no chance of it being a composite number. Therefore, there are two ways before 1. There is a way for 1 to be included among prime numbers, and a way for 1 to be excluded from prime numbers. What does math gain if 1 is included among prime numbers? All natural numbers are classified as prime or composite numbers. There is no natural number excluded from that classification. Mathematics gets one rule that applies to all natural numbers. This is definitely a good thing for math. Does math lose anything by including 1 as a prime number? It doesn't look like anything in particular. But something pretty big is about to happen. Let's express 60 as a product of smaller numbers. It's prime factorization. Ultimately, 60 can only be expressed as the product of prime numbers 2, 3, and 5. If you ignore the order in which 2, 3, and 5 are multiplied, the form is unique. This holds true for any natural number, not just 60. This is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic mathematician Gauss proved in 1801. Every integer greater than 1 can be represented as a product of prime numbers. Moreover, its form is unique. However, this theorem is only possible when 1 is excluded from prime numbers. Consider 1 as a prime number. Then, 60 can be expressed as a product of various forms of primes. This is because the value does not change no matter how many times you multiply it by 1. If 1 is a prime number, there are infinitely many prime factorizations for one number. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic, which states that the form is unique, does not hold. It's not possible to determine a unique prime factorization for 60. You also cannot use the prime factorization for 60 to find the number of divisors. You can't find the greatest common divisor or least common multiple of 60 and 25. You'll lose all math based on unique prime factorization. Should one be considered as a prime number or not? That was the question given to mathematics. It was a matter of choice. The appearance of mathematics would change dramatically depending on which one mathematics choose. The decision was not difficult. Subtracting one from prime numbers proved to be more advantageous for math. Mathematics willingly gave one out of prime numbers in order to obtain the fundamental theorem of arithmetic and mathematics based on that theorem. Because mathematics has always been hungry for theorems and rules. As a result, one became a number that was neither a prime nor a composite. One would be really disappointing. One was not excluded because one didn't deserve to be a prime number. Students studying math may also feel disappointed. If one had been a prime number, the amount of math would have been reduced so much. However, what can you do? Do your prime factorization homework right now. Thank you. Be back.